It's for everybody. You know, years ago, before I started walking in the realm of the spirit and before my spiritual eyes were opened, I greatly thirsted and desired to have my spiritual eyes opened. You know, I, I got born again from being a Hindu in a meeting that was organized by a denomination that doesn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in all that. But however, they are very good in proclaiming the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, being a Hindu, and I received this flyer in my letterbox announcing about a 30-day crusade. I just felt compelled to go. You know, being a Hindu, we do not know anything about all the fightings that goes on in a church. Whether my denomination is right, your denomination is right. We don't know anything all this, you know. We only know one thing. There is a God called Jesus Christ. And the Christians go to a church. That's all we know. Being an outsider. So, I went to this meeting. It was in an auditorium, something like this, you know. And I was seated right up on the balcony, hearing the message. And when the preacher, an American man, gave an altar call, deep down in my spirit, I heard a voice. This is the true God. Go and follow him. Real voice, real audible voice coming from deep inside me. This is the true God. Go and follow him. So I thought in my mind, what about all the gods that we have been worshipping all this while? The Hindus worship 330 million gods, you know. Don't ask me how they counted. Somehow they got it all figured. So, and every Hindu, a good, pious Hindu, will worship at least a dozen gods in their houses. We have a small altar in our house and we keep the pictures of all the gods. There will be one patron god. He's like the guardian of the family. And then with all the other gods. So in our house, you know, we, have, we worship about a dozen gods. And here uh, I'm in this meeting and I'm hearing this voice. This is the true God. Go and follow him. So there was a battle inside me. So what about all my other gods? What about them? So I just sat, you know, but the voice kept on speaking. Each time it stopped, it will continue. Each time it stopped, it continues. The only thing was it was getting louder and louder and louder. This is the true God. Go and follow him. I didn't, didn't know what to do, what to make of it, if, you know. So I just sat on the seat. And after a while, I felt the chair on which I was sitting began to shake. It literally shook. Literally shook. And I was looking, you know, the chair was shaking. Literally shaking. And the voice keep on speaking. This is the true God. And the impression is coming into my mind. Get up. Get up and go. And guess what I did? I just held on to the handle. I wouldn't go. See, I didn't know what to make out of it, you know. Why is this voice telling me this is a true God? Why is the chair shaking? I didn't know. But I was just very stubborn. So I saw a lot of people getting up from their chairs and going to the front. Then suddenly, a third thing happened. I felt a hand below my back. It gently lifted me up to my feet. Now, I was up at the balcony, you know. So I thought in my mind, first there was a voice, second came the shakening, third came the hand that lifted me up. If I were to resist any longer, this hand is going to take me up and throw me down. <laughs> so I thought, let me just submit myself to it. And I felt this hand just clutching me, you know, 
and he gently let me down three flights of steps. And I came and I stood on the left part where the preacher was standing. I clearly remember this whole thing as if it happened yesterday. As soon as I came, it seemed that the preacher was waiting for me all the while. I don't think he noticed me. Nice white man, you know. I don't think he noticed me because there were about 50 other people. And I was standing in one corner, not surrounded by anybody. So as soon as I came, he said, let us pray. So he started leading the people in the sinner's prayer. I didn't understand anything, you know. I was just a Hindu, 16 years old. So I was standing there. So I didn't know what to, whether to repeat the sinner's prayer or not to repeat the sinner's prayer. I did not know anything. So I stood there. I said, okay, I've come this far. Let me go one step further. See, I looked up, you know. I said, Jesus, if you are the true God, please set me free from this cycle of rebirth. Hindus believe that, no? Cycle of rebirth. And they believe that there are eight... Does that sound good? So good. <laughs> but I hate to hold a mic though. I like my hands free, you know. Anyway, it's okay. So, so I said, Lord, if you are the true God, please set me free from the cycle of rebirth. As soon as I said that, I felt a pot of oil being poured on my head. I literally felt it, you know. And it was, I turned around to see if anybody was standing beside me. There was no one within a three foot radius. No one. But I felt a pot of oil being poured on my head. It oozed down my head. And as it was oozing down, I felt a cleansing taking place inside my heart. And it flowed down my hands. It flowed down my body, all over my face. And it reached my legs, and when it reached the toes, and when it left, I felt my, all my sins forgiven me, and a great peace that I cannot explain come and fill my heart. At that moment, I knew this Jesus Christ is the true living God. With four supernatural encounters, I came to the Lord. So, after I got saved, and uh, this church, you know, the, that held the meeting, gave me some pamphlets and some books as a follow-up to read. So I came back home. I kept my faith hidden. My father was a priest. So you don't want to go and tell him I just became a Christian. You know, so I kept it hidden as long as I could until I was caught red-handed with the Bible, and then all hell broke loose. So he severely rep reprimanded me from uh, reading the Bible or having to do anything to do with Christians. So I obeyed him, no? I forgot everything about uh, the meeting, the church, everything. But I was back to my normal life as a Hindu. Then came our annual vacation, school vacation, you know? So during the vacation, I, I had nothing else to do. I had no friends. My father never allowed us to, to mix with any friends, you know. Very, very strict man. Very strict. Home, school, home. That's all. No play, no play time. So anyway, so sitting at home, one month of vacation, not knowing what to do. So I was sitting all alone in my bedroom. And I thought, okay, let me read the book that they gave at the meeting six months ago. It's called Steps to Christ. You know where I'm coming from now? Okay. All you are very wise prophets, you know. <laughs> you see, I didn't know what that church was. I didn't know what denomination it was. All I knew was I got saved. Period. It didn't matter to me which church they were, you know. 
And as I was reading the book, the same voice that spoke to me, this is the true God, once again it spoke. It said, you made a mistake. Go back to the church and get baptized. Period. Very distinct, very clear, just like how I heard six months ago. So, I remembered all those events, you know. So, I immediately went to the church. Good thing they had services on a Saturday. So, I could lie to my parents that I have extra classes in school. So, I would put my school uniform on and go to the school. I would be the only person in the church with a school uniform. Anyway, so I met the pastor and I said, I want to get baptized. To make a long story short, after he said, you know, first you need to learn about the Bible. Then only we can baptize you. So I asked him, how long will that take? Three months. I said, all right. So every Sunday afternoon, during that period when my father sleeps, that was the time I would sneak out of the house, go to the church, have my Bible study, and run back quickly home before he gets up. And all during the three months of Bible study, I did not learn anything about the Bible except the teachings of the church's denomination. It didn't matter to me, you know. My one goal was to get baptized. You know, it didn't matter to me what they thought about Sabbath keeping, what they thought about uh, not eating clean food, unclean food. It didn't matter to me. All that just went into one year, it came out the other year. My goal, <laughs> my goal was to go through all the studies so that I can be ready to get baptized in the water. Because that's what the Lord told me, you know. Go and get baptized. So, I got baptized on the 3rd of March, 1979. So after that, I was now in high school. One day I was walking down the road to school when I felt something come from heaven and drop into my spirit. When it dropped in, the voice spoke. God is calling you to the ministry. So this was how I was led step by step. So eventually I became a member of the church and that church doesn't believe. By the way, it's called the Seventh-day Adventist Church which I'm sure you have guessed by now. Have you? But you see, I was so naive, so like a baby Christian who knows nothing about whether it's a Methodist church or an Anglican church or an Episcopal church or Presbyterian church, United Methodist or this United Methodist. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they are all disunited anyway. Right? They're all disunited anyway. You know. <laughs> Whatever it is, my one goal was I was led by the Spirit. That was all it is, no? So, after I got my call, to make a long story all short, after a year and a half, I came out of the church because realizing that all the wrong teachings and the wrong doctrines in the church you know, when I came out of the church, I was introduced to the Pentecostal church. And they didn't like the Pentecostals. I didn't like them. Not so much of shouting like what we did earlier. <laughs> Look, this is what I happened in 79, not now. <laughs> you know, in the 70 of the church, they're all straight jacket Christians. They only sing hymnals, hymns, you know. No clapping of hands, no moving of your body, nothing. Straight jacket Christians. And then here I came into Pentecostal church, just jumping up and down, they're clapping their hands. I felt like a fish out of water, you know. So I didn't like to go to the Pentecostal church. Say so all this hooliganism, you know. Not you, you are good. <laughs> Anyway, then I, I came to know about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I had so much of this Seventh-day Adventist teaching inside my mind that I could not accept what these Pentecostals are telling me about speaking in tongues, baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
so i told the lord lord i don't want to listen to this guys or that guy i want you to teach me lord so i took the bible and i read the gospels over and over and over and over again until i was convinced of the truth that this baptism of the holy spirit is real so once i knew it was real i began to pray earnestly from the middle of 1980 up to september 1981 i prayed earnestly lord fill me with the holy spirit fill me with the holy spirit then in 1981 september a mighty man of god came to our town and he conducted a crusade and in the crusade i was gloriously filled with the holy spirit for three days in a row i felt like 110000 electricity would flow through my whole body for 15 whole minutes i will feel it flowing and flowing and flowing mightily three days in a row every day so i was so happy now i got baptized in the holy spirit after that i began to earnestly desire the gifts of the holy spirit because i saw that in that preacher's life how all the nine gifts of the holy spirit manifested in his life how he used to call out people's names and tell them their problems so i i said lord i want this i earnestly prayed for the gifts of the holy spirit and when i got to having exercising the gifts of the holy spirit in my life i was not satisfied with that there must be something more then i came to know about another man of god by the way both these men of god have all gone to be with the lord but this other man of god had a deep intimate walk with god in the heavenly realm he used to be caught up into the heavens he used to see angels he was translated you know and uh, he has this communion of saints in glory that that began to rub on me i said i now i need that so that is the next step so i began to pray earnestly lord i want to walk with you like that man of god i want that same anointing lord open my spiritual eyes okay in this pursuit during this period of time i do not know how i got this book but a book called the believers authority written by the late kenneth he hagin his book came into my hand so i read the, read through the book when i read through the book i came to the part where he one day was dissatisfied with his own spiritual life and he wanted something deeper have you read that book so he locked himself in his in his church and he told his wife i'm going to pray and seek the lord don't wait for me to come for dinner i'm not going to come out until i have an encounter with god and he opened his bible to ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 to 21 and chapter 3 verses 17 to 22 where the apostle paul prays a prayer for the ephesians believers so he prayed the prayer lord these prayers are spirit breath prayers and they are not only meant for the ephesians believers they are also meant for me so i claim those prayers he prayed and he prayed and he prayed until the lord told him from this day onwards your spiritual eyes are opened so when i read that something stirred inside me so i thought if we can op- work for a white man it can certainly work for an indian because our god is not color blind right he is not color blind so i wrote down that prayer and i personalized prayer lord fill me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of my understanding when be enlightened that i may know what is the hope of my calling and what are the riches of the glory of my inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of your mighty power that worketh in me i wrote it down on a piece of paper and i prayed and i prayed and i prayed every waking moment every little moments of time that i get 
I will kneel down in one corner and pray earnestly this prayer. One day, as I was praying, I saw like a flash of light. It says, after 180 days, you will get this gift. I don't know why that 180, but I, make, I made note of it in my diary. But I still kept on praying. Every day I pray that prayer, you know. When I'm traveling in the bus, I pray. When I'm walking, when I, I pray, every little moment I get to go to one small corner, kneel down and pray this prayer. Third week of September 1983. I think it's either the 23rd or the 24th. I was in a spiritual meeting. And when the prayer was going on, suddenly my spiritual eyes were opened. I saw the Lord Jesus Christ hanging on a cross. For 20 minutes I saw that vision. From all different angles, you know. From the right side, from the left side, from the front, from the back, from the top, from all corner. And tears flowed from my eyes like rivers. I wept and I wept and I wept. I did not know why I was weeping. And I could not control the tears. It just flowed like rivers. That night, when I went back to my room, I was recording this incident in my diary. I have a habit of writing down all visions that I see, whatever the Lord speaks to me in my diary. You know? When I wrote that incident in my diary, I thought, let me see what day is that day. When I counted back, it was exactly the 180th day. That was the exact 180th day my spiritual eyes were opened. From that day onwards, every time I'm praying, I'll see a vision, a spiritual vision. And I was not satisfied with that, you know. No, this is not enough. This is not enough. I must go to the next step. What is the next step? Seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. That is my next step. So I began to pray earnestly. Lord, I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I, mean, I heard what that man of God talked about. Nice. Oh, when he shares all his wonderful experiences, how he was caught up to the heaven, how the Lord Jesus Christ would come into his prayer study, or when he's reading the Bible, how the Lord Jesus would walk into his bedroom and said, do you understand what you're reading? It, it was so nice to hear all that, you know. But I did not stop there. I said, no, I need that, Lord. I need that. If you can do that for him, you can do it for anybody. Because you love everybody. So I prayed earnestly. I prayed earnestly. One day, after about two months, I decided to spend a whole day in prayer. You know, this man of God, he receives, I served in his ministry for about two and a half months. So he received hundreds of letters every day, people writing to him for prayer. So it was my duty, when he goes out of town, to pray for all those requests on his behalf, and then to reply, send replies to all the people. So on one, that one particular day in November 1983, I decided to spend a whole day in prayer, from 10 in the morning up to 5 in the evening. So I told my associate, look, I'm going to pray today. Please don't disturb me. Please, you take care of my part of the work. Tomorrow I'll make up for you. So he agreed. It's a very nice young guy. So from 10 o'clock in the morning, I went into the prayer room. And I knelt down. I began to worship the Lord. and began to meditate the word and just wait on God. And when the evening came, about four-ish, I said, all right, let me now pray for all these letters. So I knelt down beside my bed. And just as I was about to say, Lord, Spirit of God, I'm going to pray for all these letters. Help me to pray. As I was about to say that sentence, I heard the sound that somebody was turning the doorknob. So I, was want I wondered, when I told that no one should disturb me. How come somebody's coming? So the door opened. And just as I was about to say, who goes there? The Lord Jesus Christ entered in. As real as you see me standing before you, I saw him standing there. 
wearing a beautiful blue robe a blue robe he stood there and he closed the door behind him and he walked so gently so gloriously you know no one can imitate how the lord walks just such a gentleman style of walking you know he walked he came straight i was just wouldn't you do that i'm sure you would do that you know so ah, this is an experience of a lifetime you know you are hitting the jackpot now you know previously i thought to myself if i ever see the lord this is how all the questions i'm going to ask him have you ever thought like that but the moment you i saw the lord the mind goes blank the mind goes blank and it just odd odd at the beauty of the lord jesus the beauty extreme beauty you know when solomon wrote he's fairer than 10000 i think that's not correct you know it's more than 10000 more than 10000 so glorious he came and stood beside me and what he said next shocked me he said i have come to pray with you so what do you mean lord i have never heard anything like this before and then what he did next shocked me further he knelt down oh my this is getting bad and bad i was i didn't know how to react you know here first i was shocked by his beauty second i was shocked by the statement that he made third i was shocked by his action of kneeling down beside a dust king david rightfully said now who am i but a worm but a dog so who am i for the king of glory to come and kneel down beside me i i couldn't digest all this you know then he said put your hand on those letters and let us pray so i told the lord i somehow plucked some courage you know i said lord i do not know what all these people have written shall i read them one by one to you <laughs> so that we can then pray <laughs> see how naive and stupid we are brother brother alan shared a wonderful scripture yesterday you know he knows the end from the beginning he already knows what's in the letter but you see my naive naivety and my innocence now i said lord i don't know shall i read to you <laughs> he just smiled at me you know one beautiful smile he said just lay your hands we will pray so i i laid my hands and the lord laid his hands on my hands and he said let us now pray and he lifted of course i didn't pray you no know, i i didn't want to miss this opportunity so i opened my eyes i looked at him we were this close i i looked at him he lifted up his face and he just groaned and groaned and tears flowed like rivers you know i saw romans 8:26 personified before my eyes the holy spirit groaning in prayer i saw the lord you know his spirit his inner when inside and he just groaned his whole chest and his whole body was moving and groaning and tears flowed down his eyes and when he was through with the first letter he will tell me now this is how you shall reply to them and we went through all the 300 letters one by one by one not a collective prayer you know like how we popularly do today that day i learned every person matters to the lord every request matters to the lord it's not a collective prayer lord we pray for all these letters lord answer them every single letter every single tears matters to the lord so when we were through with all those letters then he looked at me he stood up he laid his hands on my head 
and he blessed me. From that day onwards, every time I close my eyes to pray, I see the Lord Jesus Christ standing by my right side. So I was very happy. But I said, Lord, this is not enough. There's something more. What's more? Now I want to see your glory, Lord. I want to see heaven. That's what I started praying next. I earnestly prayed, Lord, I want to see your glory. Lord, I want to see your glory. I prayed earnestly. And before that, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and chapter 12, that in the last days, the communion of the saints will be restored back to the church. Are you familiar with that? You have. These men of God used to share wonderful experiences of how he had this communion of saints. You know, we are not talking with dead people. They are not dead, you know. Because the Bible says, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, God is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. He is the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. He is the God of the living. If they are living, then we are not practicing necromancy. Amen? You are with me? It's not necromancy, no. They are living saints in glory. And we have a proof in the scriptures in Matthew chapter 17, where Elijah and Moses came and talked with the Lord Jesus. So the scriptures are there, isn't it? And also in Matthew 27, verse 51 and 52, you read it that after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the graves were open and the saints rose up and they appeared unto the people in Jerusalem. So they appeared, saints in glory appeared and spoke with the people. So we have scriptures for all that. You you're with me? All right. So before I prayed to see the glory of heaven, before that I prayed, Lord, now I would like I didn't actually pray to see all these saints, you know. I didn't actually pray. I just decided to walk with God. The Lord gave me a commandment. He said, Do this commandment, spend this number of hours each day in prayer. I'm, going, I'm not going to say how many hours because that is specific only for me. It will not apply to everybody. I learned that it does not apply to everybody because when I shared this with a few other people, when they did that, that same number of hours, nothing worked. So then I realized no, those, that was tailor-made for me. But the principle is waiting on God. That's the principle. Walking with God. Fellowshipping with God. Pursuing earnestly. This is what you must now learn. Pursue earnestly. I'm sharing all this with you, not to brag about my spirituality, you know, but to provoke you unto jealousy. That's what I'm doing. That was, this is not what I actually prepared to share with you tonight. You know, I'm just provoking you. I say all this with great humility. I'm just provoking. My one intention is to provoke you unto a holy jealousy so that when you leave this place and when you go home, you will kneel down and you will pray, Lord, if you can do that to that Indian, you can do it for me. Amen? That's my desire, that you will do that. If God can do that to an Indian, He can certainly do it to you. Because God is not colorblind. So, I began to spend this number of hours every day in prayer. After seven days, one day, I was just waiting on God, meditating the word. Suddenly, I felt someone just entered into my room. I turned around and I saw a very aged looking saint, full of glory, with long white beard, long white hair, standing in my room. And he walked towards me. 
and he asked me what are you reading i said sir you know in india we are taught to address elders as fathers you know or ayya ayya means sir or you call them fathers you know so i said father this is what i'm reading so i then looked at him he asked him sir who are you he said i am the one who wrote the book of revelation john i did not say the word john you know and he sat beside me he said turn your bible to the book of revelation let's go to chapter 1 you know how i wrote that and he explained to me you know how he wrote that and for a long time i had a question in my heart i said sir you were in the island of patmos how did you write those seven messages and got it delivered to the seven churches all over asia minor he said when god gave me that revelation the angels of those cities they all came and stood before me so i wrote on the scrolls and i will give it to them and they took it to the various churches to the angel of the church in ephesians they took it so this was how he explained to me i was so thrilled so after that brief visit of about half an hour he left from that day onwards every other day a saint would enter into my room when i'm waiting on the lord either to pray together or to explain to me some scriptures you know some things that i don't understand about the bible they say do you know what it means when i'm reading the book of isaiah the prophet isaiah comes he said let me explain to you what this means every day this went on so i was very elated but i was not satisfied now there must be something more something more what's next see the glories of heaven that became my next goal so i began to pray earnestly lord i want to see your glory lord i want to see your glory every day i earnestly passionately pray this prayer lord i want to see your glory a week before my birthday a say or oh, on my birthday a saint visited me in the night when i was praying no he said today is your birthday i have come to bless you very soon that which you have been praying for it will be granted to you as soon as he said that i knew this was the one so i said thank the saint and he left and i kept on praying earnestly lord now you have given me a sure word of promise it's no more just by faith now i have a sure word of promise it's like earnestly began to contend again praying lord i need this lord i need that one day on march the 24th 1984 at 2 o'clock in the morning as i was waiting on god suddenly i saw myself in a strange place i opened my eyes i looked around so beautiful park beautiful park i said i was in my room in india it's a small room 6 by 6 and it's all cemented ground how come this is a park beautiful park i've never seen such greenery anywhere else in the world just as i was wondering where i was two angels about 8 foot tall came and stood beside me and said welcome so i asked them where's this place this is paradise and they took me around you know to a place where children are little children 3 years old 5 years old saw them staying in that part of paradise and uh, so that was another gateway that was opened likewise till today i don't want to stop hungering 
or desiring. It is not good to just hear what preachers like me come and tell you, Oh, I have had this experience. Oh, I have had this walk. This is possible. That is possible. Oh, yeah, it's all good. No, don't stop that. It is your father's desire that you press on. You press on. It is your father's desire. I say this with all knowingness and surety. If it is not your father's desire, he would not have shown me that yesterday. He would not have shown me. It is your father's desire. You know, a Syrophoenician woman came to the Lord Jesus Christ for her daughter. Her daughter was demon-possessed and she asked the Lord to heal her. And the Lord just couldn't care less about her. You know, he just ignored her. First, the disciples ignored her. Then it was the Lord Jesus Christ who ignored her. He said, no, you know, you are a Syrophoenician. Your time has not come. I am sent to the house of the Jews. It's not good to cast the children's bread to the dogs. You know, in the Eastern culture, to call someone a dog is a very, very high insult. And the Syrophoenician woman is an Easterner. Even today, in the Eastern culture, you don't call a person a dog. That is the meanest and the most lowest insult that you can give to a person. But look at this woman. Even though the Lord Jesus Christ insulted her and called her dog, instead of feeling offended and just walk away, okay, you call me a dog? you instead of reacting like that she humbled herself she said yes lord i am a dog i am a dog lord but i'm not going to give up i'm not going to give up she remembered now what dogs do dogs keep on going around the master's feet don't they you try to shoo away a dog it keeps on coming back right it keeps on coming back again and again and again you know that's what dogs do. They don't give up. That's what that lady, that woman did. She did not give up. She said, yes, Lord. Even the dogs will come and sit at the master's feet and hope for the crumbs to fall down. Now, when she pursued the Lord till then, that moved the heart of the Lord Jesus. And he said, According to your faith, let it be done. She, you know, her faith moved beyond time. Technically, the Lord cannot bless her because he's under the old covenant. So how did he heal her then? Her faith, faith has no time, you know. It exists in all time. Because she moved in that faith dimension, it transcends time to the cross, when the blood fell, it made the way open for the gospel to go to the Gentiles. In that time dimension, the Lord turned around and spoke to her, according to your faith, let it be healed. And she was healed. Pursuing after the object of your passion. This is what God expects you to have now. If by the end of this conference you are going to have a breakthrough and I am sure you desire that, don't you? You have not just come here for a hate knowledge, have you? If you are here for that purpose, I have bad news for you. You have wasted your time. You have wasted your time. At the end of this conference on Saturday, you must have a powerful 
encounter with God. Even before that. And the only qualification is for you to earnestly contend for your destiny. Earnestly contend. This is my destiny. Lord, I want that. Earnestly pray. Earnestly pursue. If you do that, the coat that rested upon Joseph, the coat of many colors, it's not just many colors, you know, it's many promises. The sevenfold spirit of the Lord that rested on that coat will also come upon you.